Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Today I thought I would show you around a part exchange car that we have taken in here at Barrow Motors. We took this in part exchange against a Jaguar XE. It actually happened to source that car via James at Chops Garage. So thank you very much, James. We got that sold. We took this car in part exchange for only £200, a little Vauxhall Astra. And I thought I would do one of these I bought a cheap car type videos. Um, some people seem to like them. Some people aren't that interested, but I thought we'd give it a go and just see what we can get for 200 pounds. That is it tucked in over there behind all these other cars. So I'm going to have to move a few things around, maybe rope in some help. Poor Mark sat in the back of a tiny little two series. Might have to drag him out and get him to help me move some cars. We'll get it out and have a look. Right, so there you have it. You should have seen some very cool and classy and kind of exciting cinematic shots of this car now, thanks to Toby and his amazing editing skills. It's quite the machine, isn't it? And don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking it and I'm not complaining because there'll be plenty of people in the comments who will say, you only paid 200 pounds for it, what do you expect? Slagging off your customers. I'm really not, I just, you know, it's fun, isn't it? Sometimes to look at what you can get for not a lot of money, a fully functioning car with MOT for 200 quid. But, all the same, let's go around and find everything wrong with it that we can. So, we've actually got a Michelin tyre on the front. These are little wheel trim things, they're not actually alloy wheels. But I think they're going to clean up very well for minimal effort. There is some cracking in the tyre, but I wouldn't say it's too bad. What have we got? They're Michelin... Don't actually know, but they look like winter tyres, don't they? I wonder if we've got a matching set. Doesn't look like it. On the back we have some... Del Max Touring S1s. Also a bit perished, but not too bad for what we've paid. There is a fairly decent lip on the disc, but again, not horrendous. The front one's actually really decent. It obviously would benefit from a good wash. We have got a good scratch down the side there. I can catch it with my nail, so you know, it's not going to polish up perfect, but then, you know, that's the least of our worries. It's a red car, it's a red Vauxhall, it's got a lot of lack appeal. It's just par for the course, isn't it? Even around the window here, look. But I think we can make profit on this car for sure. Well, I say that, I'm very optimistic, haven't I? Because I haven't actually driven it, um, which we will do, but from the looks of it, considering the chap has driven it to us in order to part exchange it, how bad can it be? Boom, boom, boom. It's foreshadowing, isn't it? Just notice we've got like a bent aerial that snapped in half. We won't make any comments about that and anything along those lines. Um, our roof rails are flaking off, but other than paint peeling off and things like that, it actually looks quite straight. There's no real knocks that I've seen so far. Maybe a little scrape around there, but Nothing major. Uh, it came from Lanfoist Car Sales. I'm going to guess that's Welsh. But, you know, stand corrected if needs be. Um, loads more lack appeal around here. So the worst of the lack appeal along the roof here, uh, but it gets most definitely the worst on the front. And I don't know why. We've got like these white dots underneath. I know someone's flicked white painted it at some point and it's stuck to the bits that aren't lacquered, but they managed to wash it off of the bits that were lacquered. Really don't know. But bodywork, again, quite straight. Another little scratch. We've got more of this white stuff. Look, I don't know what's going on with that. Someone in the comments might be able to tell us someone who works in paint, maybe. And what that's all about, I really don't know. We've got another Touring S1 looking more perished again, but plenty of tread on it. And what have we got on the front? Have we got a matching? No. So we've got a Pirelli uh, P7. Cinturato 
So we've got a matching set of, what do we say they were? Touring S1s on the back and then odd ones on the front. Shocking. Um, it looks like the wing mirror's had a bit of a bing as that's sort of hanging off a little bit, but I think fixed, genuinely fixed. Um, coming around the front, well, looks all right, doesn't it? Quite looking forward to cleaning this. That is about the worst of our bodywork damage, to be honest. That scuff there, yes, there's cracking there, but that would all polish out, or a bit of silicone or something on there. It would look a hundred times better. So, let's have a look inside. Just the one key, but at least it is a remote central locking version. We've got the most agricultural sounding door locks on these things. And it's far from clean, but I've seen much worse, it has to be said. We've got some roasting hot, I can't express how hot it is today. Cafe Nero water. Oh, just spotted 5p, so it now owes us £199.95. If any luck, we might find a few more coins. Um, it wants a quick hoover round, but not too bad, especially for what we paid for it and, you know, what we're likely to sell it for, which I haven't decided yet, but will not be any great sums of money. Quick look in the boot. Right, our parcel shelf is a bit foobard. Is that hooked on there or is that? Now oh, we've lost a pin. Oh, that would be that there, I imagine. Sorry if you can't see any of this. So that is hooked back on. And then we've lost a threaded jobby thing on there. Oh no, that's the thing that I've used for down there, I think is actually that. Right. Well, that's one thing fixed and that should clip onto there. We're missing the pin for back there now though. Got some hair bands. We've got a spare wheel and all that malarkey. Yes, we do. It's looking a little rusty, but doesn't seem to be any water in here. And we've got our toolkit. We're just missing oh, the screw on thing, which is there. Everything seems to be here. It just hasn't been taken care of properly. Screw that all up. Not too bad around this side. We've got the packet of someone's lunch under there. And, oh, I have spotted another coin. I think that's only a penny, though. So £199 and 94 pence it owes us so far. One thing we haven't discussed yet, and I should get you to guess, really, is what do you think the mileage is on this car? What year was it? It was 2009, wasn't it? And, obviously, you've seen the condition, the paintwork. Place your bets now in the comments below what you think the mileage is, and I will wait until the end to reveal that. The closest, I don't know how we could, I'd like to offer some kind of free merchandise, some air fresheners or key rings or something, but don't know how we could do that. Maybe on this time we won't, but in future, let me know how we could do closest guess or something, because you, you could never really monitor it, could you? Because someone would just say the correct mileage once they've watched it, and I would be none the wiser. It's roasting hot in here, so I won't stay too long. We've kind of had a look around anyway. We've got our, this must be the most manufactured radio in the world, the CD30 MP3. They come in a Astra, Corsa. Uh, they were in Vectras, I think. They were in Vivaro vans. Like this same unit fitted everything. I've definitely bought quite a few of those in my time. You can't really give them away these days. You probably pick one up for about eight quid. We don't have a sport button. Sometimes with these, you can take that button out and there's the cables behind to which a button would have fitted to give you a sport mode, which might give you kind of sharper throttle response and you can fit a button or just wire them together so you're in constant sport mode. But I really can't be bothered to find out. Um, one thing I was hoping we might find in that glove box when I opened it then was any kind of paperwork. I think we've got someone's passport photo back here, which I won't show. It's, it's not to the person I mean, there is a passport photo here, but I won't show it to you. I'll hold it this way, then I can see it. This isn't the person who bought the car. So either that's been in there a long time or maybe it's his son or something. So there is no paperwork. We do not have any service history whatsoever. We do have the V5, which tells us it had five owners. But other than that, we don't have any more history on this car whatsoever. 
So I think we pop the bonnet, have a look under there, see what the oil looks like, see whether it's been recently serviced or not. And then we'll do a quick vehicle score and take it for a drive, find out if the air conditioning works, which I doubt. So the next thing we can hope for is the windows work at least because I am sweating like a pig. Right, here we are. Have we got a black box? Is that a black box or is that a tracker? I really couldn't tell you. Meta system T342. Could be a tracker. I mean, honestly, who's putting a tracker on this? It has got a QR code on it, so should we scan that on my phone? No, that's not it. So let's Google it. Meta. 342 Meta System T342 real time tracking device. Now, I can't imagine someone was tracking this because they were so concerned it was going to get nicked, unless they had some kind of crazy ex partner or something. But we will rip that off anyway because we do not need anyone tracking this car for whatever reason. Why you would want to, I don't know. In fact, that can go straight over there in the scrap. Maybe, maybe they were just like me and very forgetful and they can never remember where they parked their car and it was just handy to be able to track it that way. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, maybe he had a crazy girlfriend who used to track him or something. That's odd. Maybe he didn't know it was there. Anyway, before we get into any kind of allegations of anything, let's have a look at the engine. So... It's uh, definitely got some kind of oil leak going on or they've just had very bad aim when they're refilling the oil because it's looking pretty gunky and horrible. And the oil looks like it's got some colour in it. Let's have a look at the dipstick. That, it's not too bad actually. You can still see through it somewhat. Um, do you know what would be interesting is the vehicle score will also be able to tell me what this is. I got a feeling it's a 1.6 petrol off the top of my head, but I could be wrong. That looks like it's less than 100% secured. Look at the state of this auxiliary belt has got like some kind of weird condition. Yeah, we've got a Halfers battery, which is actually secured, so that's good news. Coolant is low for sure, but. Is, oh yeah, when it's cold it should be there, so it's definitely low. Let's have a look at the colour. Mm, it's kind of got some colour to it. Maybe we'll just put some water in there to kind of get our levels up a little bit. If I had a Torx bit here, T20 I expect that is, I'd whip that off and we'd look at the air filter, which would probably give us a better indication of servicing, but I don't, and I can't be bothered. So we'll just have to guess that it's been serviced at some point, but yeah, it's, it's probably not been the most loved car in the world, has it? So I want to do a vehicle score on this car so I can tell you a little bit more about it. So our registration is Foxtrot November 09, Romeo November Zulu. I'm going to hop in the car and we'll see what it tells us. So our Astra scores 493 out of 999, which is pretty average. Is it ULES compliant? I expect it probably is. It is indeed. It's got a 72% MOT pass rate. Looking good. Last MOT had no comments. Recent MOT pass rate is high. Average yearly mileage is good. Bad bits, over 10 comments on recent MOTs. Over two failed comments on recent MOTs. Vehicles over 10 years old. Ve vehicle mileage is above 100,000. Almost gave the game away there, didn't I? It is above 100,000. Um, but I'm not going to tell you how much more above. So let's have a look at vehicle details and performance. So it's a 1.4 petrol. The mileage is on there, so that's going to give that away, isn't it? I'm going to, have to get Toby to blur some of this out. Our mileage tracker is looking good. So you can imagine that's always going up like that. I'll get Toby to blur the mileages out on the left. We can tap to reveal our performance figures. So Euro state is 4, 88 brake horsepower, insurance group 10, which is quite low. Top speed of 112 miles per hour. 12 months tax for this bad boy. 210 pounds the tax for this car for a year is more than we paid for it now if you were spending 200 pounds on this car you probably wouldn't be too worried to find out whether it's got any dodgy history but if you're handing over more money or you just wanted to double check because i mean i say you wouldn't be worried 
but perhaps this car's got a logbook loan against it or some finance outstanding. I'd probably, I'd be surprised at this age, but you never know. You can use vehicle scores history report. So you can use a salvage report, which is £2.97, the ultimate report, which is £8.97, and the ultimate report plus, which is £11.97, the one that I highly recommend because it covers absolutely everything, whether that car's been imported, exported, whether it's been seen at a salvage yard, whether it's got finance against it, whether it's been written off, you know, whether it's a category S or N and many, many other things that you're going to want to know about a car before you hand over your hard-earned cash. If you use my code SHIFTINGMETAL20, you'll get 20% off, and that'll make that £9.58. I think I'm right. It's well under £10 anyway. It's just a no-brainer when it comes to spending thousands of pounds on a car. One thing I forgot to say then was this has got 295 days of MOT left, and I don't think it even had any advisories. I didn't show the MOT history, because I didn't want to give the mileage away and spoil the game. But yeah, we've got MIT until the 17th of April, 2025. So yes, it's ugly. Yes, it's scabby. But if this drives okay without any major issues, I think we can clean this up, make it look the best that we're going to make it look for what it is. I think we can get 600 quid for it, can't we? We can triple our money with very minimal effort. So I think what we'll do is we'll head out on it, take it for a drive, see how it goes. Right, fires up okay. Let's check out our air conditioning. Mm, it felt cold, then it's just got hot. But I'd be eternally grateful if it did blow cold. It's, what's it saying the outside temperature is? How do we do that on these controls? I have no idea if it's even changeable. Amazingly, we've got just under half a tank of fuel, which gives us 245 miles of range. Our average consumption is 43.5 miles per gallon. It's pretty decent. It doesn't look like we have an outside temperature thing though. Unless that's what it's telling me at the top there, 39.7, I could believe it. I mean, not quite that hot, but it is hot. And the aircon is definitely not working. So immediately I can tell you we've got electric front windows, but not rear, which is a shame. I would have gone with the old 460 air conditioning. I can't remember who used to say that. I think that was Dominic Littlewood. All four windows down and up to 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so far, it seems to drive as well as you would expect a 1.4 Astra from 2009 to drive. Gearboxes are, I think, usually the weak spot on these. First, second and third, I think, are usually the ones um, normally when you let off, you've got a bit of overrun. They'll be like, whine, whoa, 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 whoa. Corsas, Astras, my Schum Vectras were all the same. Of course, I started out selling a lot of Corsa Ds, and they always seem to used to have it. It's funny how cars of certain generations like this, what is this, an Astra H, I think? I won't have driven for quite a while, really. We're privileged enough to have moved into more modern cars I guess you get back in them it actually surprise you at how well they drove in your mind you think of older cars and you know they drive like tractors in comparison to modern cars but actually it's really comfortable say it hasn't been looked after but you know there's no suspension knocks I would expect there to be some kind of ball joint knocks things like that but no it tracks true the brakes are pretty good I think it broke in a fairly straight line then We'll have to try it again. Difficult me being the lanes around here. We've got a lot of camber in, so. Yeah, in a straight line. The fact that the remote central locking actually works surprised me. I would have thought that at the very least, the battery in the key would be dead. And at worst, the central locking receiver or something would be broken. I feel like that's a fairly common thing with Astros of this age. I could be wrong, but. I bet if this had decent paintwork on it, you could sell this for 1,500 quid, maybe, in today's market, quite easily. But I don't think we'll be asking that much. I think, well, I always say a figure that I think, and I hand it over to Sophie, who normally asks and gets more for them. So I guess I'm not that clued up on the lower end of the market in my mind. I just want rid of them, and if we make a profit, that's great. 
Whereas for Sophie and you know other people who trade at that sort of value, they see more value in them. I see the potential problems in them, so I try to just avoid them. Does our radio actually work? Yeah, because there's a lot of suggestions here. I don't feel yes, like. it does. As well as a CD30 MP3 ever worked. Of course, I forgot with this being a 1.4, it is going to be the flattest engine in the world. For some reason, you're better off with. I don't know what it is with Vauxhall, but it's almost as the engine size goes down in these small hatchbacks, the better they are. The one litre, very good, very nippy. The 1.2, pretty good, a pretty good all-rounder, but the 1.4, really sluggish. And I think the 1.6 isn't that great either, but certainly the 1.4 is very much a low light of their range of engines. It's just practically dead to the world. I've probably said this in other videos before. First gear now at 10 miles an hour. Not too bad, I suppose. It does technically rev up okay, and we were up to 30 miles an hour quite quickly. I was still at 30 miles an hour, to be fair. But perhaps it's just the absolute lack of torque. You cannot feel any motion happening whatsoever. It's technically, it's technically it's happening, but you just, you just won't be feeling it. I have to admit, this has surprised me at how well it's driving. You look at something like this and see the state of it and the state of the paintwork. It's not clean. And you just think, you wouldn't want to give any more than scrap money because it probably is an absolute bag of crap. I've bought plenty of things before, wanting to see the potential in them and ending up regretting it. So I think 200 pounds is the right price for this, for sure, because we can still scrap it and make 30 quid. But actually it does drive really well i'm even tempted to go as far as putting some r1234a gas in it and seeing if we can get the air conditioning working back again because then we clean it up and i think 695 you got yourself a really decent car and you made four five hundred quid so i think we'll leave it there i'll head back we'll get this cleaned up as best as it's gonna be and then I will give you the rundown on whether the air conditioning worked, how it looks, and you can guess the mileage. So I will see you then. Right, so here it is, all cleaned up now, uh, hoovered out inside. It's not drastically better, but it's good enough for a trade sale. I have also plugged in the air conditioning machine, which is a real pain because I spent at least five minutes trying to find the high pressure nozzle. It turns out you have to take like half the bumper off, which is a bit of an exaggeration, but it is a pain in the bum. So now that it's clean, as clean as it's gonna get, just pull it over to the car park over the road. Gonna get some pictures of it and Sophie can get it up for sale. So just some very basic angles. This is literally how quickly I take pictures for trade cars. I just don't even stop. Time is money and all that stuff. Make sure we get the paint crappiness in there. The Schmegums crotch stains on the seats as well. I just realized we're missing a headrest. Did you spot that before? I didn't spot that before. And this Mark stole on it for himself when he cleaned it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's about it. We'll go back. I'll send those to Sophie. She can get it up for sale. I forgot as well that I went to give Mark the key for it. And he said, oh, I've already got a key. It's a bit flaccid. But it does operate the vehicle. So we do have two keys. In fact, earlier in the video, I lied. I was wrong. As I say, we did recharge the air conditioning. But... It most definitely has not worked because it is roasting in here. But there you have it. I think we'll struggle to not make profit on this. I reckon Sophie probably gets 700 quid for it. And as long as I get my money back, I will be happy. So it's a little bit of extra pocket change for her. She might not come to me asking for money quite so soon, but I wouldn't put my money on that. Anyway, that is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you give it 
a like. It will really help me out. As well as subscribing will also really help me out. It's free for you to do. And in return, I am giving away a £2,000 tag oil watch as soon as we reach 75,000 subscribers. If you've enjoyed the cheap car video, let me know in the comments. You can check back through the history. I think there's a playlist on the channel that says cheap car buys, as well as all other types of videos, including auction buys, things like that. And if you fancy winning yourself a nice car or watch, then head to my competitions website, feelgoodcompetitions.com, where you could win some stuff for really cheap prizes and help charities at the same time. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Ah, you thought I forgot about the mileage, didn't you? And that's because I did until we got back. So I did ask you to guess what the mileage on this car is, and I can now tell you it is 154,116 miles. Get in the comments below, let us know whether you got it right. Probably didn't get it exactly right, but how close you were. And uh, yeah, thanks for guessing. Thanks for watching. See you next time.